Ramble. Voulez-vous coucher avec moi? Welcome to Guilty Pleasures. Today, we're talking about Moulin Rouge. I forgot what it was called for a second. <laughs> Moulin Rouge. Moulin Rouge. Moulin Rouge. Joining us in the studio, we got Keith the Man Habersberger. Keith the I Man. I am here to talk about this movie that I unabashedly love. Rachel's here. What? She's being what? sneaky. Uh, we'll Rachel just came in. It. She said we're not allowed to scream for the first 10, 15 minutes of this episode. <laughs> yeah, right, no mom. fucking promises. Yeah. But then when I told her we lawn. were doing Moulin Rouge, she crossed her legs and yeah. gently like fell to the ground for a yeah, second as if it was too much to film. handle. <laughs> Yeah, um, Garrick one. is not here, not only Aww. because he hates musicals, but uh, I think it's for the best. Away. But this is this is the musical for the modern man. Tell me about it. Moulin Rouge <laughs> is a story of love. That's it, period. That's it. It's a, a poor poet artist and a, a penniless beggar and a dying penniless courtesan <laughs> find love. It's literally it? she's the, a courtesan cream. Courtesan? Isn't she like a? Is that what you call them? Like at the in the in that age, Corti- a prostitute Cortian. kind. Of? Cor- Cortian. Courtesan. 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 I don't think it's a. She's an accordion. An accordion? She's an it's accordion. It's definitely not courtesan. Courtesan. What? Mm. I wasn't actually very clear on what her job was. I'm pretty was. sure that's what it is. She was a hooker performer. Yeah. Wait. Okay. Wait. You didn't even finish the introduction. Hi. Garrick's not here because he's filming a movie. But Kelsey's here. Very excited. And she's dressed like the Riddler. Thank you. I tried to dress cuckoo for Moulin Rouge. Uh huh. Now give us give us the log line and then our personal experiences. <laughs> okay, sure. <laughs> a, a, a courtesan, C O U R T E S A N, courtesan, in modern usage is a euph- euphemism for a kept mistress or prostitute, oh. particularly one with wealthy, powerful, or influential clients. She is that tied is to the, the duke. That is a direct the duke. definition of what courtesan. The the diamond is, but yeah. Carry yeah. on, Zach. So yeah, the or the Keith. poor poet <laughs> loves the courtesan. The courtesan, however, is betrothed to the duke. Mm-hmm. So the courtesans, the poet is like, well, what if I wrote the play for the Moulin Rouge to make it money? We'll still have the duke's money. You pretend to be in love with the duke, but we'll we'll literally write a play about what is happening yes. right now yes. because that's all he can write about. So he's so in love. So he's writing a play about the movie we're watching uh-huh. in the movie. Uh-huh. 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 <laughs> and but but instead of him, it's like it's a magical sitar. It's just really they goofy. They like place it in India. It's yes, it's place in India. It's just this really goofy, ridiculous romp. It's a musical entirely comprised of modern songs that uh-huh. were popular uh-huh. in the eighties and nineties and uh-huh. maybe early aughts. Was it late nineties uh-huh. that it came out? Yeah. No. It was early uh, aughts. It was like two thousand two thousand one, I think. Yeah. Somewhere in there. And it's this wonderful musical about love and uh, this the story in the play within a play is paralleling everything happening and it has this grand ending number and there's a gun. And that's all <laughs> you need to know. He that- just kind of nailed the synopsis for yeah. me. He got me off yeah. the hook. I was going to say it's wacky. Yeah. It's uh, absolutely wacky. And it's made by Boz Lerman, Which the guy I, yeah. who did The Great Gatsby. It's important to know Boz Lerman, who is the king of style. Uh, he yeah. did most recently Elvis. He did Romeo plus Juliet. The mm-hmm. OG version. Great Gatsby, as you said. And I think this is one of the movies that he is most known for. He's he didn't intro, he didn't create, but he's certainly the king of the modern jukebox musical, which this is. It's a musical that takes art a house. bunch of uh, is it art house? Yeah, I don't know that it is. I what? think it's like pop candy pretending to be art house. No, it's it's I don't know. This it's is definitely cra- jumping this is an back and forth across trip. that line. It's definitely acid trip. I wrote in my notes. I think that this movie is speed racer for gay people. <laughs> Did you know, speaking of gay people, Boz Lerman is not gay. Uh, which is crazy to crazy me. Crazy to me. Because Boz Lerman makes the most eccentric, the and, uh, over and, the top shit. Just Romeo and Juliet, Moulin Rouge. Like, these are love stories that are like capital L love. Yeah. And like, everyone pouring their heart out mm-hmm. like penniless gasping, writers. Yeah. It's just re- sort of over the top love. Yeah, yeah. Love, 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 love. I like it. And I was, so I didn't have time to rewatch the movie, but it's fresh <laughs> in my mind. The scandal. I, I, re- I probably watch this movie twice <laughs> like a year a anyway. <laughs> Same. Because it's just a good, Ugh. it's a good Saturday mm-hmm. night, but you don't want to do anything. And like, it will hit. It's going to hit. Do you know what I comp this movie to that we have done on the podcast that people will remember me saying is, Hook 
is a movie you could watch over and over again because every time you watch it, you're like, I didn't notice that thing in the corner. Or like, look at the way they made that basket or yes. the crazy oh, tree house. Has I a weird... want to run around on the hook set more than anything else. Should have been here for the episode. It was great. Oh my God. Yeah, it would have <laughs> been fun. set. So you as a as a Fuck frolicky me. boy, me as a queer theater kid wanted to definitely run around the set of Moulin it, Rouge in oh, high school. Yeah. I was like, how do I get to be that gal? And uh, did you see the Broadway show? So I didn't. Becky oh. did. Becky did, and she hated. Did you it. like? Hated it. <laughs> yeah, she thought it was horrible. Did she like? And the she movie? loves the movie. She loves the movie. Okay, I love the movie. Adores and I the movie. Fucking loved the musical. It's, it's on in, Broadway right now. It's on Broadway. It is the most. It it feels like a parody of someone who who like heard about what Broadway is and was like, okay, so the whole theater is lights. You have to squint your eyes the entire time because you you can't see because there's so much <laughs> confetti and there's actual like uh, hazardous objects flying at you at all points it's color it's fun it's ridiculous it's yeah. so good so i have to get shout out to the broadway version if you ever have the chance to go see you absolutely have to i guess becky also saw it right after one of the main people was replaced and she said that person was really bad i wasn't I looking know. at the I people she didn't like i don't it, give a shit but i don't care about the broadway version i think the movie is one of the best musicals you can watch of a wow. movie musical yes it's just so because musicals are supposed to be really fun and ridiculous but the problem with music movie musicals versus theater musicals is that it's about like normally uh theater musicals are about big choreography and i think west side story did a really good job of filming choreography Fuck, yeah. but most of them are Steven kind of Spiels. boring they kind of are boring and this instead of shooting it like mm -hmm. a musical it shoots it like a music video the whole mm -hmm. time it's like an hour and a half music video yeah. and it's just so loud mm -hmm. the colors are so saturated it is just the, a visual the filming style the editing style we want to talk about all that i want to hear you want to know our personal experiences I kind of heard it, but I would love to. Yeah, sure, Kelsey. Okay. Yeah. Uh, mine is I fucking love this movie. Yeah. <laughs> I watched a girl named Chelsea Brummett's house in high school, and she was the coolest girl in school. And I was like, wow, the coolest girl is showing me the coolest movie. Shout this out, was Kelsey. your first your first time you watched it. It was you were in the high coolest school. girl in school. Yeah, house. so it was a big deal. And I was Huge. like, oh, this is like one of those movies that they talk about when you like first feel a tingle in your your vagina. I was going <laughs> to say vagina, but I realized you both have penises. When you're like, wait a minute. I mean, do Ewan I McGregor, know what horny is? Ewan McGregor and Nicole Kidman in this movie, both at their peak hotness. Yeah. Oh, oh my God. God. She's so, so hot. hot. And I don't actually, I in any other movie, I'm not really that attracted to her. She's but just, she's just. But she's so hot. She's getting in this film. <laughs> and I love this movie so much that, number one, it's my karaoke jam. Um, Lady Marmalade and Elephant Love Song Memory are my top two yeah. karaoke song choices. Yeah. I love the movie so much that for my 25th birthday, uh, I went to Paris and all I wanted to do was see Moulin Rouge. That's uh, all I wanted to do. <laughs> and it was sold out for the night of my birthday. Wait, what do you mean it was sold out? Moulin Rouge is a place. It's a place. And what is it? It's a show. It's a cabaret. Yeah, it's a cabaret show that. in Paris yeah. that you yeah. can go see. Does at, everyone know that? At the, <laughs> that at the, the literal like lighthouse with the spin and wheel. Yeah, they, it's a, That's a real fucking place? Yes. Yeah. This is based on a true story. It's How the, the fuck am I Rouge. supposed to know that? Did you know that? I didn't know that. It's based on a true story. When you watch stupid. this movie, you don't think this has got to be real. <laughs> yeah, because it's an acid trip. <laughs> Did you know it, Miles? No, I had no idea. Okay. I knew of it. Sorry, we're so cultured. I just knew that it existed. I don't know how I knew it existed but I knew it existed. Okay, so it definitely exists. It's a place. So you fucked up planning your vacation. Uh, yeah, That's why the moral of the story is only always 25. planning. I didn't, I, yeah, I didn't get tickets and we ended up, we're like, well, you can go to Crazy Horse, which is exactly like Moulin Rouge. You guys are going to love it. Here's some tickets. I was with my father, my mother, and my oh. sister. Crazy Horse is a titty bar. Hey. It is not Moulin Rouge. It is not Cabaret. It is not Go Go Dance Dance Can Can Girl. And so like two <laughs> songs in and there's like nipples in our face. And I was like, this is very uncomfortable. My dad was like, we got to go. I would imagine that the Dara family was into it. You, we weren't drinking. Ah. So it was like, it's still kind of bright outside and we're at a titty bar. Mm. Like we got to go. Uh -huh. Titties so, in the daytime. It yeah. hit different. Titties in the nighttime. Yeah. Titties <laughs> at summer time. Yeah, it, it is a little, um, it, you know those <laughs> nights where the sun comes up and you're like, oh, I'm still awake. It felt like that, but it was like, but it was yeah. actually the afternoon. Yeah. <laughs> so I fucking love this movie. I have no cons and I dare you to try and get me one. <laughs> and then Keith, I asked you to come because I, I don't, I didn't know if you loved this movie, but I know that you love musicals, the musicals. And I know that you love the song from this movie. I've seen you sing elephant love medley at karaoke uh, more times than I need Keith to in a I lifetime. It more times than I wanted to sing it, but I am because people know I know it. That it's, it's they forced come to upon me and be you. like, Keith, let's sing this song. I'm like, okay. And I'll, I'll just yeah. say I'll, I'm very I'm very much a yes I'll do whatever kind of person. Yeah, you are. Um, and, and you crush it. 
and I love it. It's fun. And I'll do either part. I'll do the girl part. I'll do the guy part. Uh, I'll, same. I'll jump. I'll jump to a harmonic part. If you want to, you don't know what the harmony Easy line is. I'll do the harmony line. Don't For those who don't it. know, Elephant Love Medley hits how it hits so many Bangers. big pop songs. I'm trying to remember. I know Heroes by David Bowie's in it. Love uh, uh, up, up where we belong. Uh, <laughs> it's basically they're all together, songs that have the word love. love. It's a love medley. Uh, um, anyway, a lot on of top of the elephant. Yeah, and it's song, <laughs> and the elephant is a real thing. It's a theater. It's that a shut theater. up. Yes, you shut your Riddler mouth right now. I can't. This elephant is so fire. <laughs> um, but going back to what Keith did say about how this movie, like, if you think you've seen Speed Racer and we lost our fucking minds, like our eyes were bleeding for like color. It's everything about this movie is loud, dramatic, colorful, which. I feel like this is why I love it is because that is like a perfect description of who I am. Mm -hmm. Don't let this outfit show you, but it gives you so much of a uh, performance. It, it, the, the entire thing from the editing to the costuming, to the design, to the actual performances, the accents, the music, what I loved about this movie, it like reminded me why I fucking love movies when you mix them with musicals wow. specifically. It's so fun. Would it you was say nominated. that heartbreak feels good in a place like this? Oh, you know, I had someone stand up and quote it in my theater the other day <laughs> when I went to go see um, Thor and it was fantastic. We Incredible. Just, it's just so like constantly overwhelmingly visual even the like editing. and they do a lot of like little goofy jokes. Yeah. Like they do, break up Do you remember when you first saw it? So I first saw it yeah. at my newest girlfriend's house when I was Ooh. a junior and she was a freshman. We were both in marching band. Ooh, uh, and hot band I, it was the first time I'd gone over to her house. She's like, do you <gasps> want to come over to my house and watch a movie? I was like, sure. Sounds good. You think you're going to get laid and then instead you see Mulan Rouge? Well, I'm thinking we're, I'm thinking we're going to make out, you know, because her parents were home. So I'm Bold. like, I don't think I'm getting laid, but they were leaving <laughs> us alone assumption. in the living room. So I'm like, maybe I can get a kissy kiss. Ooh, kiss. Maybe nope. I can get a kissy kiss. And, but I'm like, she's like, do you want to watch Moulin Rouge? And I didn't know anything about it. And I'm like, ah, and Keith really, I didn't really want to, but I was like, this is just going to be something that we kissy kiss to. So oh, who cares? No, who no, cares? No. We put that movie on. No, no, no. There's no time for kissy kiss. No, no, no. This is was, not a background making out movie. I was like, this movie. is incredible. It I was is. like, this you is so good. gave up kissy kiss. I'm sure we movie. had a kissy kiss, but I was at least significantly. A kissy. There's no invested. way you don't get horny watching this. I was definitely like, I was like, wow, this is amazing. But it was so, but it's also so emotional. Mm. I'm also a very a music sucker. driven oh. emotion person. Mm -hmm. So like, whereas I rarely emote, mm -hmm. music is the thing that will make, make me you emote. cry. So like a good scoring to do a sad wear, scene. Do you rarely emote? <laughs> I, feel I, I, I think in, in I think in that, sad. That's something he's a we would very say about no, like when it comes to intensity, it, okay, like practicality. Right. Okay, he's okay. very logic based. He'll be like this about logic, yeah. But he's not gonna fly off the and fucking I don't, handle. Like, I, I do fly off the handle, like it is a performative thing. But I'm, I guess I mean I don't cry publicly. Uh -huh. Okay, I'm not moved to tears by most many things, mm. but music is exact I, the number one thing that does it yeah. so music the way that song is so sad and sweet and emotional and also the emotions of the, the love and this person oh, dying is it's so yeah. it is impossible for me not to emote which of course i think as a high school boy with your girlfriend that is probably a huge turn on, turn on to her because she's like wow this boy is crying I at this movie you know that, what i, I want to give him a kissy kiss and dance up yeah I, it was i and i Really remember thinking I was not going to like that movie, and I thought it was so good, I and I wanted to talk, and I think I watched it the next night with my neighbor friend, Casey. <sighs> wow. I was like, we have to watch Did you make out with her? It. No. She, she was just, she was like my sister. I had known her oh. since I was five. So did you make out with her? <laughs> I don't think we ever made out. Oh, okay. Maybe in second grade wow, we kissed. Wow. Oh, okay. Zach, yeah. is this your first time seeing it? <laughs> so I thought I had seen this movie. I watched it last night. No. Turns out I was super fucking wrong. Yeah. And let me tell you, watching this movie for the first time, it is... An absolute onslaught Are you on high? all of your senses. I wasn't. I don't even know how <laughs> I would handle it yeah. if I were high. I have a series of questions oh. about it throughout okay. this episode, but I'm just going to tell you at the gate. I don't get it. What? <laughs> I seriously What's not to get? super duper don't get the appeal. I don't understand how this movie is so huge. I don't understand how it was nominated for eight Oscars. I it thought won this movie, Oscars. It won two of them. Yeah. I think this movie is batshit, and I it stuns me that Boz Lerman is as uh, accessible as he is, which kind of thrills me. It's like, because this is, this is 
batshit filmmaking. It's crazy. I, it's a, it's the, edited like a ba like a crazy YouTube video. The, yeah, the way you say that it's uh, music video filmmaking is correct. Yes. Uh, should, should we just dive into some yeah. details? Sure. The, the editing is it gave me palpitations. Yes, it's like it if if Jason Statham mm -hmm. in the movie Crank became <laughs> an like, editor for a little bit. He it's, threw his headphones off are, trying to describe that's the editing. Because that's how yeah. enigmatic it is. Listen it feels. to this. This is the rate of, of the, the way cut. The shots There's change. not yeah. They, he doesn't hold on shots almost ever in this movie. Not and more than five seconds so in the beginning. So much beautiful shit. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, you can't even fucking see any of it. No, they except want you for, to keep moving. Except for the the quick change scene of the them explaining the play. Mm -hmm. But instead of having fast editing, it's just crazy camera work. Yeah. It's just spinning well, the well, camera. Well, it <laughs> was nominated for Best Cinematography, too. I don't... Okay, I... Uh, it's because no one had ever seen somebody dare to present to a be film like absolute, that. To, it's what, when you hear, like, ADHD and Adderall, it's what you, like, imagine the craziest version is and it is well they're drinking absinthe in the movie yes. and this film is dipped we all drink absinthe. we all drink absinthe Together? yeah but it wasn't, yeah. it wasn't real um i felt high yeah this I movie sees the fairy my body i don't know you're supposed to like actually immediately hallucinate wildly and I no think, i felt I like out of my that. own body i think this is more than absinthe i think this movie is like huffing ether yeah this movie <laughs> is like pink. mercury poisoning yeah. and then they gave someone a camera i wrote moulin rouge is speed racer for gay people i wrote uh moulin rouge is that scene where bugs bunny wears a red dress <laughs> but as a whole movie <laughs> it's so <laughs> it's so fucking wacky and I think the first question that I have, and this is about Baz Luhrmann in general, but specifically this movie, is Moulin Rouge funny? Yes. Oh, I think it's, it's very hysterical. funny. It's hysterical. It's a so, riot. And so we'll, we'll, open the door. <laughs> open the door. <laughs> the characters are ridiculous. And we'll look at specifically the first time we meet uh, John Leguizamo and the other merry bohemian men. That's, that's a comedy scene. Oh, I wrote down the group scenes are so fucking fun. The comedy and timing really? always works. And that is really? so hard. In reality, it's it felt like you were watching a play when they were coming up with the play on the spot for the first time in front of the Duke, not just in the, yes. the attic, but when they're coming up, yeah. it that is like eight heavy hitter actors in the room <laughs> who are out doing each other number line by line and the pacing of the joke you pick up is great fucking work it yeah. must have been so unbelievable as a performer in this movie to say hey go further yeah. <laughs> just however far you think you're supposed to go i want you to go further and you know how the lines are like <laughs> stacked on top of each other i'm like how, did they take any pause between they had to have taken pauses between lines to get clean reads of they editing have, and but they're also like all moving dramatically on almost all those lines. They're like yeah. jumping around. They're like, yeah, throwing their hands in the air. Yeah. You know what it felt like to me mm. is the skits that we've done together when we're on acid. <laughs> it's, you, <laughs> it's you go I've into a bedroom invited. and like you're wear like John Lucas is literally wearing a yellow shirt as hair and like someone's wearing goofy sunglasses <laughs> and like I'm a person and I do this. Yes. <laughs> it's just like a bunch of people on drugs telling stories to each other. It made it the I remember the first time seeing it that it gave me a stomach ache because I felt so uncomfortable watching people <laughs> act that way. I was like, what is this? artistic bohemian revolution happening on the other side of the world that people are acting so fucking weird and like wearing makeup and like crazy blush. Yeah. And it did give me a tum tum ache. You see, at that time in my life, I was mostly watching really goofy bananas, like Monty Python stuff. Mm -hmm. And this like, fits right in. so to, to, I was like, this is exactly what I like. And I was so afraid that it being called Moulin Rouge and it being a love story in Paris that I was going to think it was terrible sure. and then i started watching it and it's a, it's nonsense i was like mm -hmm. this is great but it mm -hmm. does have real emotions which is why i think it i think it's because it is so absolutely ridiculous and still makes you feel things it's why it's Ugh. a movie that's good when and you mentioned the the wackiness of it they literally i, I mentioned bugs money before like it has looney tunes movement and it also sound effects yes yeah, so sound people effects. will turn and it's like prank it's it's three it's stooges at times for sure and like they don't they have all of them looking around a door frame and their heads are all stacked yes. and like it's just <laughs> yes it's ridiculous but it's like so the fun fact i didn't wear makeup today specifically because i was crying watching this movie 
I the fact that it can have Looney Tunes sound effects against a live action fucking Bohemian Rhapsody love story and then make me sob uncontrollably still at the end, even though I've seen this movie. 10 hundred times. He's trying to kill you. He's what is it? The He's greatest trying lesson in life is to love and be loved in return. Yeah. Oh my God, isn't it? Just to love I'm going to cry again. In return. Feel, I, I, I felt the love stuff was a little cheap. What? I felt it was a little cheap. What was cheap? It's just, they just says the word love a lot and we're all like, oh, swoon. He's um, so in love. It's what easy. about all the times they're making out and running around like little teenagers falling in love backstage trying to hide it from everybody? I, I, di I didn't feel it like I felt it in Titanic. I'll say that. Maybe because you never had an experience that way. <laughs> You're just like, I've never been in love. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would say if you have, and I didn't really, but if you have been dating someone in the cast of a show oh. and you steal kisses backstage, there's something there. There is. There's something that really is, there. That was my favorite part of the movie is that this Naughty. nailed drama club horniness. Let's yes. talk about it. Oh, yeah. you're you talking can't not be in Six, five, two, nine right here, baby, for Superior for my school. School. I am Ooh, that girl. bitch. If you are in a play, we're making out. We are making out. Are I don't care if you're out. the sound guy. I don't care if you're backstage manager. I don't care if you're doing lights. I don't care if you're the lead. We're making out. Wow. I really missed out on the, a lot of these opportunities being someone who only was in a school that had theater productions when I was a senior. <gasps> and like a lot of connections That's had already right. been made. So I like all of my like where I would have maybe had those opportunities. I was in fucking middle of Tennessee. Like I, I was kissing girls literally in the woods. It's amazing to me <laughs> that you're not gay. Just like Boz Lerman. I get that. Just like Boz Lerman. I get that. I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah, I guess I see you as straight, but in my mind, you're gay. <laughs> I mean, I, you know, a lot of people, <laughs> the whole internet seems to think I'm bi, which I'm not. You but don't I, know. I'm great bi representation Prove it. on the you channel. You might not know. You Prove might it. Not. I don't know. Kiss me and tell me you feel nothing. I've kissed a lot of dudes. <laughs> yeah, but it, for it's never theater, made me want to go further. For theater, you never did it out of your own passion. Or true, have you. true. I didn't. Exactly. I it's think different. I did kiss a guy when I was drunk in college. Like, let's try this out. Like, nah. Yeah, not but did for you me. like him? Or I, were you just like, let's just do it and see what the fuss is about? He was a gay guy, and he and I and he was I, he was I think he was one of those people. Like, well, have you ever kissed a guy? I was like, well, not really. He was like, well, won't you want yeah, to know? But I'm if like, you okay. Didn't get a bone bone. For <laughs> it didn't. Him, it didn't it do it for right. me. <laughs> yeah. He Maybe was. He was. He was a fine kisser. He was a fine kisser. He was a fine kisser. It just didn't do it for me. I was like, ah. Not for me, but you know what? Fun. <laughs> Nicole Kidman uh. is really going forward in this movie. And I, I think that this might have, we might have to call this peak Nicole where she is. She's, she's just at the height of her Nicole. power. She, first of all, is very young in this. Yeah. She was nominated for Best an actress. Oscar for yep. this. And this, I should have said this out front at the gate. Like this is the first, this is the most uh, awarded Nominated, movie that yeah. we are doing. You may think that it's crazy yeah. that we're doing this on the show, but this is a real, It's. Cons I mean, even on the review on Rotten Tomatoes, it says this is a love it or hate it movie. This is a bombastic it film. RTs? It's good. It's like 78 or something. Okay, yeah, because it uh, really is a love or hate. But it it's uh, it's uh it plays in the extremes, which is why I thought it was good for this show. But anyway, yes. Nicole Kidman. So Nicole Kidman is introduced in the beginning. Remember, they tell you straight up she's going to die, but you're just like, you forget immediately as soon as you enter the wondrous, fantastical world that is Melange. And her entrance. <laughs> oh my God. Ah, Keith, your it's, eyes just it's gave in me like, everything. It's in, it's <laughs> in like choppy just, slow motion. Uh, it's like so they didn't actually slow shoot it in a the right higher frame, frame rate. rate. They yeah. just like, I, I've decided that was a style choice because I just refuse to believe <laughs> Maybe. that it happened over and over well, again. It's, oh God, we have so to okay, talk. So, it's throughout the fucking movie yeah. and it's, it's wild. Yeah. Maybe we'll come back yeah, to yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. So, so Satine, her character is the diamond of the show. She's the big grand uh, entrance. She's, she's not the grand the, She's finale, the showstopper she's like, number yeah, in, yeah, yeah. Their, in their And she descends from a swing coming through the roof. She's shimmering silver. Into the middle of a sea of a thousand dressed in tuxedo penguin yeah. men. Yeah. And she is Colin Farrell played all of them. Dripping in sparkle, and Ugh. she comes out. She's doing that acapella, ah, that's so good. yeah. And she breaks into that, uh -huh. and it's about high speed. And men 
are like dogs dumping their foot like you hit nuts. the right spot on their tum tum. <laughs> she is hot. I was dancing <laughs> in my chair. She comes and she does a whole number. We find out that her and the um, um, conductor guy, what is he technically? The Ziegler. director of the show that they really need money because they're kind of turning into like a rundown brothel because she also sells her body for uh-huh. money. We love the sex worker here. Um, and we find out through this opening number that he has gotten the Duke here and the Duke wants to fuck her. And if she fucks him, then he will fund their next show, which yes. she wants nothing more than to be just wants a to legitimate see. She just She actress. wants to be an actress. Yeah, she an doesn't want to be a sex worker. She doesn't want to be a Moulin Rouge girl. She wants to be a real actress. And she looks into the crowd mm. and she thinks that Ewan McGregor is the is Duke. Because our boy is so she's like, switcheroo. you're going to come with me. And he's like, huh? I'm the, <laughs> the one? The hottest lady in the room wants me? And he me? had been there to try and read her his poems yeah. so that he would convince her to start in their next play. Yeah. And it all comes to a head when yes. she brings him up to the elephant head. And then the Duke shows up. And then the Duke Whoa. shows up. So, okay, so what I love about that scene when she's basically trying to distract him and like play goofy, sexy. Yeah. But it's still very hot what yes. she's doing. Even yes. though it's it's cartoonish. She's like, rah, rah, yeah. rah. And I'm like, this is still kind of doing it for me. Honestly. It's just ridiculous, but it's it's still effective. It, it You will never see Nicole Kidman bark and howl <laughs> in any other film the way that she barks in she, this movie. She ow, goes ow, so ow, far. Ow, ow, ow. The, the opening over and was over again. the opening was too much for me. But like when I when I started <laughs> when I started to buy in was the scene where you finally have the two characters together in this. I mean, if you picture the Moulin Rouge poster, it's that that like heart shaped yeah. room. That's it's where like they're a doing tree it. House of fucking. And you have this great <laughs> you have this great comedy setup where she thinks that he's the Duke and that he's there to. To have sex, and that's and what he wants. Play, yes. But he doesn't know that, and so she's trying to seduce him. He's confused about it, so he's saying things, but she thinks it's about sex. Where he's like, "I'd be more comfortable standing," and he's yeah, like, he's "She's like, like it's like, a bit oh, long, okay. so I want to make sure I, you know, the thing I do is a bit Silly. modern, so it might feel weird at first." And he's talking about reading her a poem, yeah. and she's like, "Oh, okay, okay, sure. we can do it that well, way." I, sure. yeah. But to see a, an actress of that caliber yes. go so fucking hard in the paint is yes. kind of miraculous hard in the paint that was fun to say and and what actually what really sold it to me and it's a basketball phrase uh what really sold her performance to me was actually her reactions and the elephant love medley is a great scene for a lot of reasons Mm. it's the it's the scene that like their whole love story hinges on Mm -hmm. but the look on her face seeing ewan mcgregor sing makes makes (gasps) me believe in their love and it's just her reaction it makes me like his music more even though I don't really like that, I don't like covers of songs, so that's just the thing about me. Right. But I'm like, oh, wow, he's really doing it. And so it's just the power of her face, and that's that's when you have a movie star. And Ugh. she is a movie star in this movie. It's yeah. the moment that he, so it's been quiet finally. That opening number was absolutely just like cocaine on cocaine. And then you get upstairs and you, they're fumbling around and she's trying to fuck him and he's trying to get her off of him. And he just breaks out, the hills are low. And, yeah. and you are like, oh, I gave myself chills just now. <laughs> I, like when he introduces that sweet honey voice, I mean, I, right. I would drop trial for him. You know too. what I just realized? So obviously it's very anachronistic with the music. We have they do a Madonna cover. <laughs> you have a That's whole group of people singing Smells Like Teen Spirit, which yeah. really I couldn't have hated more. Um <laughs> I just fucking I hate. definitely when that first happened, when I was first watching it, I was like, the fuck is happening? And then I decided yeah. Okay. <laughs> and I liked it. And then I also like you. I don't really typically like cover medley things on paper. Uh-huh. Yeah. I don't like the songs, but, this ah, one but in execution, it. it works. They really work. And it yeah. is such a funny, weird medley duet. And I haven't really seen a medley duet like that before. That's I think what makes the elephant medley gr- fun the is that up. they're exactly it's back and forth. It's yeah. DJ yeah. earworm, baby. Yeah. yeah. But what I just realized is that Hills Are Alive is from Sound of Music, which is about uh, Nazis. And in this, the Nazis haven't happened yet because this is 1900. <gasps> wow. So, I mean, they're all confusing songs, Huge but that one hole. is 
<laughs> that's that's the most confusing of them to me. Yeah. Yeah, that was I can, a little odd. I can forgive Madonna. Maybe the intention there is that they're actually the ones creating these pe little pieces of what will next be big famous songs. Oh, oh. perhaps. Yeah. And they all yes. originated. Okay. From I'm this back play. on board. Okay. okay, so now that we've got a theory going. So the music is is probably something we should dedicate some time mm -hmm. to. Um for me, some mm. of it really works elephant love, <laughs> love medley. And then you get Roxanne. That one might have been my <laughs> least Definitely favorite. Definitely is the worst number in the movie. <laughs> yeah. You have a gruff cover yeah. of the police, which is funny because Sting has a very high pitched voice. Do we think Nicole Kidman sings? <laughs> uh, do we think she sings? I'm not. I think she sings. I think she sings. I think she sings. I think yeah. Ewan sings. Oh, Ewan. Ewan. Uh, 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 what else does he sing in? Does he uh, sing more? Oh, he sings in the prequels. <laughs> what? <laughs> in, the in the new Obi Wan series, he sings Annie. a lot. <laughs> okay, he's a great singer. He's Annie. fantastic. Yeah, he sings in the musical Annie, but it's about Anakin Skywalker. <laughs> Uh, there's also a very funny, they love taking songs, uh, with high pitches and then having gruff low versions. Yeah. They do. They have two men uh, duetting like a virgin. Yep. That very was a goofy one. Virgin. Yep. They're dancing around manically. I mean, starring, like uh, Paddington's very own. I forget his name. It's the guy. Oh, um, per, um, professor, um, from Harry Potter. Yeah. Slughorn. He's professor Slughorn. Slughorn. And I was like, when is this motherfucker going to get that book for Aunt Lucy? Yeah. Well, yeah. He was so good in this as the conductor who plays like a daddy role to Nicole Kidman's character. He mm. wants to keep her there forever. He's kind of clinging onto her because he knows she's going to be a star. But that yeah. villain, that Duke. The Duke. Was so spooky. I like him. He scared he the shit out of me. He is so like the guy in Jumanji. Oh, oh yeah, the, the hunter that <laughs> hunts them down. Wait, like, I would not be surprised. I almost think it actor. is the same I, man. I think they're different. Yeah. I looked up this guy because I thought the the Duke in this was. Uh, I don't have his name, but he's great. Yeah. And he wasn't in. I mean, he was. He definitely had a great long career, but not. I feel not I'm as big stunned as, he didn't get it more work after this. Yeah, he scared he's in me. Van Helsing. It, he was. He was literally a tiny, brawny little man, but he showed me like the power of what a guy with money and like not being able to take no for an answer could do. Ooh. And I just remember being scared shitless of those guys, like the little monocle monopoly right. man type. He men. seems like, yeah, when you first meet him, like, ah, oh, this guy's not he's really. Gonna get uh, and on. then by the end, you're like, this guy's fucking crazy. Cause he's, and he is, he's going to kill somebody. <laughs> yeah. And like, that's his story arc, right? Is that he thinks He's, he tells our conductor, I will fund this play if you write a contract stating Satine is mine, which yes. didn't know you could do that to, pe to women Different in times. 1899. <laughs> uh, and slowly he's he has no idea what the play is about. He's just like following whatever the writers and the he's, company's doing. He seems like an idiot, but then he does seem to also be catching on. And he starts to realize, wait, this play is about what's happening <laughs> to me in real life with really my sweet scene. And he becomes so enraged. Eventually he threatens that He's going to make him change the ending of the musical so that the girl ends up with the big bad guy. Yeah. And Satine's like, no, it's fine. I'll sleep with you in order to to keep the ending how it is. And then he is like, oh, I'm going to have the Christian killed <gasps> because you love him. And then he literally like has a hitman that travels with him 24-7 to just kill people. Yeah. And then like sends him after yeah. um, Christian. And then he tries to commit murder against the teen in the end, which we all just kind of like look over that. What happened <laughs> to that guy? Was he arrested? Just again, if you don't, if we haven't fully properly <laughs> captured how wacky this movie is, at the end of it, you have the, in the climax, this gun flying all around. <laughs> all around. And at the very end, uh, is it Ziegler? Someone punches the gun out of his hand. Yep. The gun goes, woo, 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 flies, crashes through a window, yep. out the window, and dings off the Eiffel Tower. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's fucking. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, Have you guys seen so this? Not a long time. Oh he my punches God. him in the face and he falls backward with such force that he throws the gun to the Eiffel Tower. Yeah. It's. <laughs> It's incredible. It's Quick so aside, good. did you notice that Ziegler was underlit in every shot in the movie? He made me so uncomfortable oh, to look it's at. It's his eyes. Yeah. Well, and think about mustache. it. When you're thinking about like a ringleader, where are you looking at him from? You're ah. looking up at him, and he is this towering figure. Or he has like, yeah, he's under a heavy spotlight, and he's he's always like, yeah, all these spotlights. Yeah. yeah. Can 
we talk about John Leguizamo? What? Who? John Leguizamo. So John Leguizamo, uh, Luigi himself is in this movie. He plays a little person. He's not a little person. Oh, yeah. Uh, yes. that was and he odd. is Weird. giving a performance <laughs> that I can only describe as... Not great. A list. <laughs> he has a weird list. He talks list. like this the yeah. whole time. Yeah, he's he's yeah. trying to kill you. He's, he's trying to like... kill I feel like John, because he was in Romeo plus Juliet. He was very good in it. Oh and I Juliet. see that's what it's called. It's a plus Sorry. sign. I feel like he did something bad to Boz. And Boz was like, I'll cast you in my next movie. Mm. <laughs> I'm going to cast you all right. There's and going was... to be some stipulations. Yeah. <laughs> I think he, this was his punishment. He plays a uh, he. He's giving me narrator energy. He's giving me like oh, I would have loved if he were the, the narrator. He, yeah, he he's is giving... kind of like what role does he serve? He's in the theatrical ensemble. Yes, and he, he plays, plays the mandolin. The sit, or he the plays, sitar. plays the sitar in the. He's, Which he looks is like a dick. Yes, a magical sure sitar does. that looks like a dick. Uh, he runs around backstage a lot during that final yeah. performance, trying to stop the the bad guy. Because mm -hmm. he's the only guy who catches on. Mm -hmm. And what's crazy is that uh, the whole ensemble, but especially him, is so invested in their love story. Oh, and well, they, you, you, like we said, when you're in musical theater, you are spending every waking <laughs> moment with these people. How have, could they not know? They have mm -hmm. so many reaction shots where John Leguizamo is like on the verge or like fully in mm -hmm. tears and cares more about them being together than even they do. Don't you okay. have people that you root for close to you that yeah. when they're in the midst of a breakup, you're like, come on, guys, get yeah. back together. I'm rooting for Can't those crazy kids. Out? Yeah. Joe and Coy, he's Chelsea that Hammer, guy. He's, are they not? They broke up? No. What? Like last night. Oh! No, they fucking didn't. Key. I'm sorry to break the news. Wait, how? I assumed you knew. You're how? such a I, stan. I like, haven't been on the internet today. He doesn't say it. They just posted a thing uh, on Instagram. He posted a thing being like, we're going our separate ways, but we're very amicable. It's it's okay. I'll always, we'll always love each other. And What? Should I text him and find out what the happened? The fuck happened? Yeah, maybe. Do you have his number? Do you not? No. I also think I have Joe Coy's number. I we, need we to on, know. We were on a podcast with him a long time ago. I need to know immediately. I was so happy He's that Chelsea also finally found a very nice guy. He is very so bring I him through. Nice. <laughs> What's he doing right now? He's 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 a I'm, podcast I'm, guy. He might come. Call him up so and see sad. what he thinks How about you, this movie. Like I don't know if you guys follow Chelsea the way like obsessively. I know that you I do. do. That's yes. why I assumed you knew. I, I which is why I brought it up to begin with. Computer today. It, she has changed into a different human being being with him in like a really great, beautiful, vulnerable way. I know. Way. I watched their, because I follow him and I see yeah. their life together. It looked so loving and fun and goofy. Something weird must have happened for that yeah. to just be so sudden. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, Anyways, I'm ready for them to get back together now all of a yeah. sudden. <laughs> I was just going to say that the closing number, so many things are happening in the movie <laughs> that are happening during the play. Yeah. And, and the play's it's still like, happening. what's hap Like the audience can't possibly know what's going on mm. in this it's show. If you were to think of this, like, what is this show about? What is that show about? He's like, I paid my whore. He like, he throws money down on her. <laughs> he and you're like, such a hard. fucking good moment. And well, I've paid my whore. It's so and it's like, but the audience watching is going to be like, huh? <laughs> it's what? We Did you know that the the emotions of a breakup, like like the rupture of a primary attachment is felt and fires the same neurotransmitters as a, uh, well, obviously we know it feels like a death or like a traumatic event, like a car crash, but it's also in the same place that physical pain is felt. Huh. Which is why you have a broken heart where you yeah. actually feel they like have a like, you know, like people that die right after their significant others. Yeah. It's like, a, um, broken heart syndrome yeah, right. it's real you can well, literally that, look be you come so to this podcast for dick jokes but you also come here to learn something look, you tell me when i was a freshman in high school and i broke up with my two-year girlfriend End of the I, world. I felt some pain yeah, end of I the was, world i i listened to yesterday by the beatles a <laughs> thousand uh, times that was my breakup song because yesterday all my troubles did seem so far away I, does it it <laughs> helps explain though it doesn't excuse Christian straight up sucks in the climax of this movie. What? What do you mean, what? What? He is a little whiny bitch boy. He's so rude to her. He's like, she's trying to get away and he's just trying to pay her money. Did you not just hear money. me talk about how traumatic a heartbreak can be? You think that excuses his actions. They are backstage during it's a mean, show. For sure. 
they are in the middle of a show. He is trying to force money on her to say, let me pay. If it meant nothing to you, let me pay you like the rest. And then in front of an entire audience, throws money at Nicole Kidman, who's on the ground crying. Throws, <laughs> and dying. On the ground dying. Throws money there. at her, calls her a whore. You think that that's a cool guy? I would like to pause guy? for this moment and ask, what's the craziest thing you did after a breakup? I'd not like to know. Not that. I'm not Tell that. Me. But I, I definitely, I'm sure I, is like in texting or calling, said hurtful things. You right? never like, like of fucking I drove over to someone's house or you never tore their room apart or keep no. their car no, or egg their house no, or slash their tires. No, no. You never did anything violent? No. What did you do? No. <laughs> I'm never kicking I, Kelsey I, off this <laughs> show. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just tell you, I am loyal as fuck and I am loyal for my friends. So if you ever fucked over me or my friends, I've hurt you. No, I, I never went to violence, but I I know that really? I, I said mean things said and mean said things. things I didn't mean. You know, it's, it's like a blind. You want to hurt? It, it's like you are feeling hurt, especially mm. in those adolescent hormonal years. Oh, you want them to feel pain too. Yes. Wait, like you, I want you to hurt. Yeah. I, you hurt me, and I like it's like you punched me. I want to punch you back. Rejection but wait, so when you're watching worse. this movie, you're not like Christian. Whoa, bro! I was like, I under fucking stand how bad he uh, under look, fucking stand look under how fucking stand. We and emotional he was to her. <laughs> All he did was like pour his heart. He was ready to run away with her, and then to to. To get to that point where he's throwing money on her, saying, "Take it, you are like I've paid of, my whore." I mean, listen, it's victim blaming a hundred percent. Like I fully agree, it was fucked up and bad, but it's a movie, Ooh. and I was like, I feel so bad that he is so fucking hurt. Wow. Because a big piece of the thing that we forgot to mention about Nicole Kidman's whole character is she dying. She's dying. She's dying. She's dying, she does she's actually- dying. from the moment we meet her. We see that she's coughing up blood and we know immediately, okay, well, what what was that about in the late 1800s? Oh, well, she's got leukemia. It's <laughs> she's tuberculosis. Dying. And then they full on just say it. And like, no one <laughs> mentions this, but tuberculosis is contagious. And oh, yeah. she was kissing a whole bunch of men. Everyone and singing. And singing. And so I think. Wait, does she have tuberculosis or leukemia? No, tuberculosis. Yeah, That's what? what I meant. Sorry, my bad. Yeah, yeah I don't know where okay. leukemia came from. I was like, that was more I, like I a walk to remember, saying, which yeah, is was, a great movie. But yeah. uh, tuberculosis. So wait, it's con- she is has tuberculosis. She has tuberculosis, <laughs> which is <laughs> contagious. And she kissed a lot of people. And I feel like if we would have seen the aftermath of this movie. Everyone has. Yeah. It. And like dead. Wow. Yeah. What a sequel they, that would be. It really took you back then. Yeah. yeah. It, yeah. There weren't medicine. No. It wasn't good. There weren't no. medicine. They barely had plumbing. <laughs> they were shitting in the street back then. Yeah. No, but but boy, did their now props department That's a musical department number have, I want to see. <laughs> hey. Great. Uh, we, we haven't given enough time to Ewan McGregor, who is mm. the star of this film. Boyishly good looking. Um, I... You know, from the first frame, I'm like, you motherfucker, like pretending that you're an awkward guy. You are beautiful. He's <laughs> How supposed dare to be you? 20. No way. Yeah, I got older woman vibes from this. I didn't know why. She looked really young to me. He she was young, like but an I just, old guy playing a young guy. Their relationship felt that way. He was acting like a young boy falling in love for the first time. Yeah. Okay. yeah. I, I think that he's an attractive man, but I actually remember when I was watching it, like him compared to like Nicole the other Kidman. leads of things of the day like back when P- Pierce Brosnan is Brosnan was 007 and like he's just so polished and clean so that in my mind was what mm. leading men should look like so when mm. I did see him I actually felt like oh this guy isn't all about he's looking. a regular guy he looked to me he, he seemed me, like he regular was, guy yeah. and he was more about the writing oh, and emotions he was not main character vibes. how about that you thought he was Especially hotter at than that shit? Time, I think he's gorgeous he's gorgeous he is but, but at the early 2000s yeah. that wasn't what a gorgeous that was like I Leonardo wasn't DiCaprio like hanging pictures up of him yeah bitch that's what I'm talking about right like, like Really, yeah. clean skin, hot, young, yeah. blonde, and or brunette men. Yeah, and that yeah, was yeah, yeah. all you got. I don't know why my mind keeps going back to Will Smith, but that was my and Will like, Smith. Oh, I mean, the muscle, gorgeous that guy. man. Yeah, Ewan McGregor. I was just kind of like, he's a guy who just he's a guy. He wants to be in love so deeply. Okay, that's not. I me look me watching it again for the first time last night. I was like, you're way too beautiful for me to believe you as a stammering. You, you fool. have so many more. M- wonderful memories of him as an actor now yeah. great point. that have made yes. him hotter. I yeah, think. I mean, yes. I'm thinking about Big Fish. I'm thinking about Obi Wan. Yeah, but Obi-Wan, talk about yeah. reactions. Tell me that man doesn't have the best facial expressions of like holding emotion, singing with emotion like that. 
He feels like a theater actor in yeah. that movie. This is, and, I'm sure. and it's it's really good. Yeah, to be able to sing and emote like that and hold it and play to camera. Oh, so much pain in his face. Uh, that's Especially what I'm in saying. that like I paid my horror scene. Oh. He's he's ups, he's sad. He's, he's so crying. sad. He's yeah. crying. And then oh when they but when they do sing to each other at the end, oh, the come what may, what walking back may. in the theater. That's where I, that's, I, I can hold Crying. my tears through the whole movie. And then there it's over. They get lifted up. And the way that they hold each other, Does like love lift you uh, up where you, you belong? belong, where yes. eagles fly. But just, it's melody. just the come what may, uh, what's it called? The melody. Yeah. It's, 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 there's a better name for what it is because you keep returning to it. It's not an anthem. earworm. There's a name for it. I'll, I'll remember Reprieve. it. There's a musical name. Uh, it, it's like a banner. Uh, mm -hmm. of the song it's because mm -hmm. it you can use it whenever you want and then sing it yeah. however you want and it's like this but it's and so it's, powerful it's so, and simple it's in front of thousands of people watching it's the finale number it's improvised in the moment right. it's like it's the he's about to walk out and leave her forever and like yeah. she uses their secret love song to get him to turn back around and then sings it with them and then when he starts singing back to her that's her sign that he loves her too and that oh my god and then she fucking dies at the end of the song and i just the, okay oh. the fucking ending i was like that, did, what? That's it? You're just gonna write the end, and then it's the end. And he you're told just you in the beginning that she dies. I know. I knew it was die. happening. But at least I thought. I don't know why I keep comparing this Titanic. I thought we were gonna have a moment of like she's dead, but also she's always in my heart. And then we get to see them live together. It's like no, no she's dead. No. The movie's over. Zach, Goodbye. <laughs> this is a true story. This is based on a true story between a love triangle of a real performer in the Moulin. It was called like Moulin Rouge Martman or something in Paris and, and it turns he, out they had a gas leak <laughs> <laughs> he wrote the story wow and that is how this movie ended was she was like tell our story promise me you'll tell the world of our love and then he dies and then he makes the movie and it's so meta He's, it's a film about a film about a show <laughs> that's in a show it's so ridiculous Ooh. and it's just made with all the influence of MTV in like 1999, <laughs> but yeah. in 2002, <laughs> it's like, yeah. what is popular right now? Just, Christina Aguilera. <laughs> uh, yes. And then they even like had that companion piece of the Moulin Rouge like song yeah. that was on MTV. So it really felt like Moulin Maya. Rouge was pop culture that in that moment. Did you guys see Elvis, by the way? Not, Not yet. yet. I do want to see it. There's a, there's a moment in that where he, I forget yeah. what Elvis song is playing, but it's basically like him walking down. It's like, doom, doom, it's a different song, but they mix in everybody. Yeah. And then they also have toxic as a way to like, it's just Baz Luhrmann is out of control. We, okay. We talked about Baz's style, which is yeah. one of a kind. Yeah. And I look, I love camp. Okay. Oh, I say camp, he is baby. the campiest of the camp. Yeah. He makes decisions in this film. I would say that don't all work for me. That's unfortunate because this wasn't made for you. It really was. And I, I, I'm like going to, you're going to hear the things that I'm like, huh? And you'd be like, what? Zach, you should love this shit. Tell but me. I genuinely believe, even though that didn't work for me, he is a phenomenal director yeah. because to get an entire cast and crew to all buy in to this wackadoodle vision, yeah. that is hard. The editing is so fast. Yes. And I mean, we talked about that before, how many cuts per second in, in a way that is like dizzying. Yeah. Um, but then there's this choppy slow motion that we mentioned <laughs> and it happened at the beginning of the movie. And I went, oh, I, I assumed because I, I mentioned Elvis. I saw Elvis. The beginning of that movie is a million miles per hour. And I thought that maybe Boz got a note of Boz darling we love it maybe slow it down a little yeah. bit and so he had to like slow it down in post mm. and okay and if you don't know what i'm talking about there's slow motion which is very smooth but if you Fast take and the furious the tire spinning mm -hmm. is a smooth example way to of slow give motion. us a call to that, one of that our speaks to our yeah, yeah. Right. Well, yeah. that's a good like you can you can see a car cheering. moving in slow motion it's smooth and it's or beautiful. like any oh, badass shit. guy walking away yeah. from an explosion slow motion mm -hmm. smooth but then if you take footage that was filmed at normal speed and slow it down there's not enough frames in between. And so you get this choppy. I mean, if you've ever tried to do slow-mo in a movie, you know what this is. That effect is throughout the movie, relentlessly. Once again, I would like to pose 
that this was an intentional. Oh, it was absolutely yeah, intentional. Because think about the moments that it's done in. It's he wants you to feel like it should be a slowed down moment in your life. I and he's like, I'm not going to only though. just inject it into you. I'm going to fucking shove it down your throat and out your butthole. I'm going to slow this down in a way that forces you to feel the intensity of slow motion. Because often they put slow motion in and you're like, whoa, you don't want to like recognize it. It should be smooth. It should be like, you I mean, know. you got me there. It definitely gets your attention. Yes. It sure does. <laughs> That's my point. I guess what's your favorite moment in that whole movie? Like if you had to pick a scene, if you had to pick a a line of dialogue, mine, <laughs> I don't know why, dialogue. but I it, every time anyone says anything about Moulin Rouge, my brain just goes, open the, the door. door. And it's the most insignificant yeah. <laughs> moment of the scene. But it is just like the way he says it is so funny. And I think it, it is because everything is said so goofy by so many of the characters all the time. Like that first him, when they're like, how do we write a play? And he's yeah. like, what about these? And like, it's genius. Yeah, <laughs> they're just yeah, yeah. so ready to just scream all the time. And open the door to me is every line in the movie is open the door. <laughs> yeah. He, that was when the conductor was, they were missing their cue yeah, to missing come cue. through the door. And he just says, open the door. Open the door. <laughs> Twice. I think, I think my favorite moment, oh my God, it's like trying to make me pick Okay, I think mine has to be when it's the moment, because we were talking about this, I think, before it started. We were like, how long is Moulin Rouge over a course of period of time, right? Oh, I don't, because yeah, it's, right. it's like how many conception days does it take place? of an idea to selling it and pitching it to an investor to putting it on. For some reason, it feels like three days. <laughs> it feels like this movie <laughs> happened in three days. But when you really look at it, and my favorite moments are probably like the in-betweens, like when she's supposed to be out with the Duke and she doesn't want to be. And instead she's like doing a little thing with Christian mm -hmm. or like when they get the day off or they say they're rehearsing and they're just like laying in bed. And it's like, it's those moments that slowed it down mm -hmm. and like went away from the kookiness. And it was so real when you were just like, ah, who hasn't done that when they're falling in love where you just throw everything else away. And like, that's all that matters. That's what my favorite part was. Yeah, It's like I the know. first night you stay up all night just talking. <sighs> it's the whole movie is them staying up the whole night just yeah. talking. The one moment that that melted my icy heart and I burst out howling uh, is they do this twice, but it's the first one's at the end of the elephant love medley and very small in the corner of the frame, <laughs> you just see a face in the yes, moon going, yes. Whoa! <laughs> and it's and it's just this face is like vibrating inside the moon. A mustachio man. The moon's, moon's, moon's singing. The moon's yeah. singing. It's moon for sings. sure that Baz Luhrmann did acid, right? And like wrote down everything unique he saw and was like, I'm going to put this into a movie. <laughs> At least he did acid yeah. and then some. It and definitely it seems been. like you ha need to be familiar with hallucinating to create those visuals. Again, I... I I genuinely think that he had a, a gas leak. Maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe they, they just they actually got real absinthe oh. yeah. and did it. Yeah, I bet. And like, we need to do absinthe to make this movie because everyone in this time who would have existed was doing absinthe. Was drinking absinthe. So we need to know what that's like as 100%. artists. And that's probably what they felt like. And that's how they edited it. Maybe yeah. the editors were drinking absinthe. I feel like everyone involved with this film had to probably did a hallucinogen as part of the mm -hmm. hiring oh, process. The train. And that's how we got Nicole Kidman barking. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, the barking will just... You've got to bark. Like, I've got to bark. You've got to bark. Yeah. <laughs> and she crushed it. I believed her. I was like, okay. And I, you will never see her do that. Again, I was like, I believe this. It's crazy. And it's like kind of like cringy, embarrassing. Yeah, and yet, oh, very. And yet still a weird erotic scene that's happening and just you so you forget she's Nicole fucking Kidman yeah. Every, the whole movie I was like she's oh yeah flopping this is around the biggest star of our time next to Meryl <laughs> Streep and she's fucking insane yeah. she's she's dancing around a table like jerking her knees up and like doing the can can and like hopping around like a fucking bunny and throwing spirit fingers around like she is a maniac in this movie yeah. and you just you believe every second yeah. of it it is very funny I mean a big storyline back when this happened is that the way she's like to get an Oscar she had to put on a fake nose in the hours and be play like a drab ugly woman and have a very restrained performance but that could not be further from like <laughs> it is kind even though again 
shocker, you guys know by this point, I didn't really love the movie. Sure. But Idiot. the fact, I, I, but I understand <clears throat> it, it the, is a love hate no. movie. But I, I, I appreciate that her performance was so big and that she still got nominated, right? Because that's that's not acting that we appreciate. No. And I'm like, wow, what a gift yeah. to see an actress of that caliber go all the way and then some. It's a very good point. Like the big, this is the for sure the biggest I've ever seen as a character, except for maybe Paddington one. I, I think this is the biggest you can see, you'll ever see any character. <laughs> I, I, I think the reason that you like it and the reason that I like it is because uh, the theatrical nature of it speaks to the high school thespian, yes. the way that the first time you see Les Miserables, uh, the way that the first time you see Wicked uh, speaks to the high school theater. You have I was also to overact so the I know, but like, back you don't, row can see it. You, you don't aren't give, still trying yeah. to be a theater performer now. Yeah. You don't know that. Yes, I, we do. I am yeah, <laughs> still <laughs> trying to be a theater performer. I would performer give now. up everything to go like beyond Broadway. Maybe. I wouldn't. It's too much work, but I would like to still write and perform theatrical shows, yeah. which I do. Which you have to overmote so everyone in the back row can see you. And this is what the actors are doing in it's just, film. You, you get to. Mm -hmm. With theater acting, ah, you get to. You get to be as bananas as you want to be. And as long as you, Rock as your down. stupid character, believe it, you get to do it. I'm doing this show with Lou Berger called The Wizard of Friendship right now. We're literally acting like it's a children's programming show. When we are talking, we are all facing the audience <laughs> and directly speaking, like directly to the camera and being like, I don't know, I'm scared. <laughs> it's like so- Why did that sound sexy? Why do you have to well, make it Because sexy? we're doing like, we're just doing, because that's in a scene where the, the forest is too hot. Oh. We were in a sexy forest. All the trees have abs and everyone's sexy. And we're like, it's too sexy. I'm scared. Okay. And it's just re it, like, you don't get you to go. act like that in a movie. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> you no. don't get to have a sexy forest in a movie. No, now we get like Moulin Timothy Rouge, Chalamet who like do. raises an eyebrow or like twitches his lip. And we're like, get oh my God. Yeah. You can yeah, get, you get to be yeah, ridiculous and it's so much fun mm -hmm. to perform that way. If you've ever been able to be in a kooky play and you get to perform goofy, it's a fucking blast. The, the actors are sweating constantly in this movie and yeah. I believe it's it. It's gross. Like <laughs> she's wet often there, yeah. and I'm like, that's real sweat. That's, that's not. theater. Ziegler yeah. has like upper lip sweat. All the time. Those, and I just was like, someone pat that. No, but down. think about a oh. ringleader. Like his makeup is creasing. I, I like lines. how gross it is. Yeah. It feels like that is probably exactly French. how fucking old France theater was. They look like they all cakey makeup. And yeah. the fact that the only thing is that their skin should be wildly broken out. Mm. Every single person should look like a mutant yeah. under that makeup. What I like about yeah. all of the characters, and you said it earlier, is that how all of them are invested in the love story. But something about it, seemed sweet to me by the end of the movie mm -hmm. the way that like the the sort of ringleader he's like he genuinely cares because before you're like it's unclear if he just is maker. trying to make money off of yeah. her but he genuinely cares and they're also sad and then she literally dies and it's like this all overwhelmingly sad moment and yet somehow it the story of love and like I kind of feel like when he's writing, like the movie's about to start over again. Yeah. That like, okay, now we're going to, and we're just going to live this love story over and over and over and over. Yeah. And we know that she's going to die, but we're going to watch it again. And uh. we're going to go through all of it. And then she's going to die. And then like, cause the way that ends the same way it begins it's insinuates him. to me, yep. the movie's about to start again. Mm -hmm. And right. I think that it's supposed to be about this like cycle of love. Of him telling the story of their love that he promised as a show, which performs seven days a week. Yes. And Ready for he, some fun facts? Fun yeah. facts with Zach's back. Woo, yeah. <laughs> uh, one more, I, I almost mentioned this as my favorite moment was the the necklace being put on Nicole Kidman, yes. this crazy <laughs> diamond. I mean, because it's just so unbelievable. And I wasn't sure. I was like, is it real? I don't even know. Uh, they were real diamonds Ooh. and platinum, and it was Whoa. the most expensive piece of jewelry uh, ever specifically made for a movie ever. Wow. Uh, up to that point, it's... Stefano Canturi necklace made with a uh, thousand three hundred and eight diamonds weighed a total of a hundred and thirty four carats. Oh, and it was worth an estimate. I also thought pounds. I was like, oh my god! It's like this is a child, <laughs> <laughs> teenager being put on her. <laughs> uh, worth an estimated one million dollars. Whoa! Hot damn! I damn. also was like, why? She should have run away and sold that. That's uh -huh. what I was like, Nicole Kidman. If you love Ewan McGregor's character, just 
Sell the necklace. Just be with the Duke she for like a week. She wanted to be an actress. I wanted to be an actress. Okay. See, that's what I said. <laughs> Somebody's that's, never had a fucking I, he, dream he before. He says, you don't know if I'm not a theater kid. Like, now yeah. we do. Uh-huh. <laughs> now we get it. Uh, so, Ian McGregor was not the first choice. No. Yes. Who? Heath Ledger <gasps> lost the role because he was deemed too <gasps> young to be a romantic oh. interest for Nicole Kidman. Oh. Whoa. That <laughs> Whoa. would have been great yeah that normally you sometimes hear the opposite casting you're like oh thank god that didn't happen no. but now i'm kind of like dang I, I would have liked to have seen that because you know at that age did he have the chops was he still coming out of um what what was what how old would he have been i have no idea it is interesting though because they he went they went old man they went the opposite way yeah interesting they went with also i bet that the star wars movies had some effect to that because he was cast, he was going to be a big lead. Was, he needed a big lead. No, I, I'm uh, Ewan McGregor. That that they wanted someone who is a guaranteed big lead, the way that the other people in the movie so this were was a setup. And I just think they like we need to sell tickets and like if we we need the biggest names possible. And did that he do was it for coming, him? Do people see him as a sex symbol now? Uh, I don't know if it was even about a sex symbol as much as it was like. We need a big name, and now that he's in Star Wars, he's a big name. Well, Ewan and he is definitely a hard too. name to say. It's hard. I never Ewan. say it. I just say Ewan. Ewan. <laughs> yeah. So we got some other uh, other Christians included: Leo DiCaprio, Jake Gyllenhaal, Hugh Jackman, and Rowan Ronan Keating. Okay. I would have obviously said. Uh, oh, know. other Satines. We could have had Drew Barrymore. No. Kirsten Dunst, love her, mm-hmm. but no. Hillary Swank, no. Kate Winslet, Renee Zellweger, mm-hmm. none of those would have worked. Kate um, Winslet would have worked. Kate Winslet, maybe. Rose, baby. I mean, yeah, she could do anything. Big She's just the most love. incredible actress of all time. Yeah. So she could do anything. And then uh, this is really good for Toulouse, which is uh, John Leguizamo's character. They considered Rowan Atkinson, Mr. Bean himself. That would have been funny. <laughs> that would have worked. He, he might have been in the background of this and we just didn't even see him. I know. I believe it. Every character is Mr. Bean in this. Yeah. So I told you like my shock, because again, this movie is so wacky. This was nominated for Best Picture. It was nominated, it tied uh, for the most nominations that year. Uh, Beautiful Mind ended up winning Best Picture that year. But I want you to just listen to how stacked this year was. I'm ready. This is 2001. These are all the movies that were not nominated for Best Picture, okay? That were not nominated. Not nominated. Okay. Amelie, The Royal Tenenbaums, Shrek, Memento. (laughs) Shrek. (laughs) Memento. I mean, this is just a a big year. Memento. That's big. Training Day. Ocean's Eleven. Mulholland Drive. Spirited Away. And The Fast and the Furious. (gasps) Blasphemy. What a year. What a year. What a fucking year. And also Zoolander came out that year. Yeah, but you know what? Look, Zoolander, all that shit. It's like, it was kooky. It was a crazy time. We were off of rockers. It was a crazy time. It was pre-social media. We were still doing lots of drugs in public and stuff. And the final fun fact is actually huh? what? 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 We don't do what we like we used the to. Social media is when drugs stopped. Yeah, they used to just do it straight at the table. Uh, better times. Better times. I, not in Car the Tennessee. Oh. Damn shame. <laughs> they didn't Can't have relate. it there. <laughs> uh, the final fun fact is not about the movie, but about this podcast. And it's that Keith actually was not our first choice. For a guest, he was our backup because when we launched this podcast, I came up with a list of movies and a list of guests, and I had a couple movies for Keith, and I went to our very own Eugene Liang, and I said, you love Moulin Rouge, right? And he looked at me with a death stare and said, you can't do that on Guilty Pleasures. And I said, why not? And he said, because it's like a really good movie. Yes. And I'm like, I know, but that's why it's fun because it's like a good one, but it's crazy. And He refused. he refused. He wouldn't come defend <laughs> he it. He scoffed. <laughs> he refused. And he, he was like in denial that people would think this is a guilty pleasure. That we could yeah. even discuss it. It's camp. Look, any campy movie is fair yeah. game. I think it's totally fair game. I think it is totally bananas. And if you told me you didn't like it, I'd be like, I get it. He did but tell you. I that. like it. Yeah. I and like I think it. it's cuckoo bananas. And I love to rewatch it because it's okay. just joyous. Well, Keith, now, now is your time to decide if this movie is a pleasure, a guilty pleasure, just plain guilty. And to tell people why they should watch this movie, you already started, so take it away. I think it's absolutely a pleasure. It's a delight, especially for me in Carthage, Tennessee, where mm. I did not have access to go see <laughs> theater. I, it, I And seeing something like that at that time was like, I didn't know that could be a movie. Mm-hmm. And it inspired me in performing. And I think the reason you should watch it is because it's absolute chaos. <laughs> it is uh, it is 
in indescri- I don't even think we described it well to you. No. To be Uh-oh. honest, it because we just kept saying it's insane and colorful. And All it- of you like <laughs> indie rom com mumblecore kid Gen Zs will just I, I'm fearful they might throw up. And I I think <laughs> you'll love it. I think it's bananas. I think it you get to see actors being ridiculous and i think the music is sweet and i think you'd, i'd be surprised if you don't have some sort of sadness weeping crying tearfulness mm-hmm. in the end at the very least you're gonna believe that they're in love you're gonna oh, feel oh, yeah. it you're gonna know they're in love you're they gonna let you know they it. are i look i mean i'm not here to yuck someone's yum i don't like the movie but I don't like it. <laughs> it's okay. It was, but I don't like it's it. It's a love it or hate it movie. Uh, but I think it's so much more interesting to see a movie that goes for it. So I prefer this version of a movie I don't like mm. because there's so much happening. And Boz Lerman is not lazy. Mm. He's going for it. He's swinging He's hard. So hard. He's working in every frame of it. And there's a lot to love. You get an incredible performance by Nicole Kidman. You get the boyishly handsome Ewan McGregor. And honestly, I mean, what is ultimately a cheat code? You get songs that you already know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you're going to hear your song by Elton John. You go, oh, I like that song, mm-hmm. which is the ultimate uh, hurdle that it's most musicals have to It's a jukebox medley musical. There you go. Wait, you don't so get did those you lo- as often. Did you label this guilty or guilty pleasure? I mean, I'll say it's a guilty pleasure. Okay, that's better. At yeah. least we can still remain friends. <laughs> um, on behalf of all theater kids everywhere, uh, this is obviously a pleasure. This is one of my favorite movies. This is one of the best movies. I think it's the one of the best musicals turned into movies, turned back into a musical. Uh, I highly recommend you watch it. Everyone should watch it. Watch it sober. Watch it on a sick day. Watch it on... You can watch this in the... Don't you, watch it on a sick day. No, you could watch this You will this vomit the, everywhere. You, you oh, could I think watch it's this a in good broad sick daylight. Day movie. But like, I think it's pretty good yeah, for that. Yeah, it'll make you feel better. It's like chicken soup. you can fall soup. asleep in and out of it and be like, when was I dreaming and when was I watching yes, the movie? Yes, you're going to have weird dreams. <laughs> would you say to watch this in daytime or nighttime only? I don't know. Anytime is fine. I, I, I would say don't watch it. I think okay. you, could, you could watch it on a Saturday morning. Yeah, uh, so it's a pleasure from me, dog. And if you also don't like it, then you can uh, tweet at me and we'll talk about how we really Please feel. Please don't. I'm only going to be putting gifts on your Twitter for the next week of Mullen Ridge. Roxanne! <laughs> uh, Keith, thank you so much for joining. Where can people find you and what's something you're working on? Oh, you can find me at Keith Habs and you can uh, check out Lou Berger's stuff. Lou Berger has a podcast called Celebrity Theme Song where we deep dive a celebrity in order to write a theme song for them by the end of the episode. So it's like you kind of listen to us writing process and you get a song at the end of it. And the songs are normally really fucking dumb, but they're really fun. You get to see a song being made in real time. And you you learn lightly about a celebrity. I wouldn't say already. Oh, yeah. So you can listen to it every every week. There's a lot no, to Kelsey. promote. Well, There's a lot to promote. Th- that's how we learn about things. That's true. Uh, uh, yeah, and then uh, we have the Luberger Wizard of Friendship, which we did as a live show in L.A. So if you're, I don't, this does, isn't going to come out in time for you to see it, but maybe we'll re put it up because people are loving it and it's super fun to do. You hear that, people? You got to demand it. I'm at Courtney and all things. I'm Kelsey Dara all things. And I'm Garrett Bernard all the things. And until next time, I've paid my horse. <laughs>